morning and welcome to Trinity Parish in Melrose. All the information you need will be in your bulletin today as we continue to celebrate this season of creation. And our liturgy for today has been adapted with prayers and blessings that are approved by the bishops of our diocese and also parts of which are used across the world in our ecumenical celebration of the earth and creation, all that we need to do to heal and restore. Blessed be the one who creates all things. The Holy One's love is new every morning. This is the day the Creator has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Creator be with you. And also with you. Let us pray our colic for today together. Grant us, Lord, not to be anxious about earthly things, but to love things heavenly. And even now, while we are placed among things that are passing away, to hold fast to those that shall endure. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first lesson is from Jeremiah, chapter 8, verses uh, 18 through 9 1. My joy is gone, grief is upon me, my heart is sick. Hark, the cry of my poor people from afar and wide in the land. Is the Lord not in Zion? Is her king not in her? Why have they provoked me to anger with their images and their foreign idols? The harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. For the hurt of my poor people, I am hurt, I mourn, and dismay has taken hold of me. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then has the health of my poor people not been restored? Oh, that my head were a spring of water, and my eyes a fountain of tears, so that I might weep day and night for the slain of my poor people. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. The psalm today is Psalm 79, verses 1 through 9. We will read it responsively by verse. O God, the heathen have come into your inheritance. They have profaned your holy temple. They have made Jerusalem a heap of rubble. We have given the bodies of your servants as food for the birds of the earth, and the flesh of your faithful ones. They have shed their blood like water on every side of Jerusalem, and there was no one to bury them. We have become a reproach to our neighbors, an object of scorn and derision to those around us. We have become a reproach to our neighbors, an object of scorn and derision to those around us. How long will you be angry, O Lord? Will your fury blaze like fire forever? Pour out your wrath. Upon the 
they have devoured Jacob and made his dwelling, dwelling a ruin. Remember not our past sins. Let your compassion be swift to us, for we have been brought very low. Help us, O God, our Savior, for the glory of your name. Deliver us and forgive us our sins for your name's sake. The second reading is from Paul's letter to Timothy. First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for everyone, for kings and all who are in high positions, so that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and dignity. This is right and is acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. But there is one God, there is also one mediator between God and humankind, Christ Jesus himself, human, who gave himself a ransom for all. This was attested at the right time. For this, I was appointed a herald and an apostle. I am telling the truth, I am not lying. A teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks. This is the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, There was a rich man who was dressed, oh wait, wrong one. Jesus said to his disciples, There was a rich man who had a manager, and charges were brought to him that this man was squand, oh, wait, I still did the wrong one. Wait, did we do this right? Oh no, it's right one. Sorry, my glasses are dirty, I confess. Sorry, guys. There was a rich man who had a manager, and charges were brought to him that this man was squandering his property. So he summoned him and said to him, What is this that I hear about you? 
Give me an accounting of your management because you cannot be my manager any longer. Then the manager said to himself, what will I do now that my master is taking the position away from me? I'm not strong enough to dig and I'm ashamed to beg. I've decided what to do so that when I'm dismissed as manager, people may welcome me into their homes. So summoning his master's debtors one by one, he asked the first, how much do you owe my master? He answered, a hundred jugs of olive oil. He said to him, take your bill, sit down quickly and make it 50. Then he asked another, and how much do you owe? And he replied, a hundred containers of wheat. He said to him, take your bill and make it 80. And his master commended the dishonest manager because he'd acted shrewdly. For the children of this age are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than are the children of light. And I tell you, make friends for yourselves by means of dishonest wealth, so that when it's gone, they may welcome you into the eternal homes. Whoever is faithful in a very little is faithful also in much. And whoever is dishonest in a very little is dishonest also in much. If then you've not been faithful with the dishonest wealth, who will entrust you to the true riches? And if you've not been faithful with what belongs to another, who will give you what is your own? No slave can serve two masters, for a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. We give thanks today for all creation, even the parts of it that may uh, in, annoy us like ragweed. So just saying, I'll do my best this morning <laughs> to, uh, to do this survey. If I wanted to sum up the reaction of scholars, preachers, and clergy for hundreds of years to the parable in Luke in today's reading, I would call it we don't get it, Jesus. For instance, Jesus tells his listeners they should make friends for yourselves by means of dishonest wealth so that when it's gone, they may welcome you into the eternal homes. Wait a minute here, Jesus. This last statement, you seem to be condoning the use of dishonest wealth so someone can go to heaven? Jesus, you usually teach that the use of money and resources should be in service to others, the hungry, the homeless, the sick. We don't get it, Jesus. The steward manager in the parable seems to be stuck on the side of selfishness in his motives here, and why, when Jesus also describes a friendship as so deep, that we should be willing to lay down our life for our friend. Why would you want to make friends with someone just through wealth? We don't get it, Jesus. Parables, as you may recall, are not meant to be exact metaphors, whereby the characters in the story are God, Jesus, whomever. The steward manager is not supposed to be a righteous follower of Jesus, nor anybody related to God necessarily. If you step back and look with a wider lens, you might wonder if Jesus could once again be using his disruptive nature to gain the attention of his listeners. Perhaps. We're meant to question actions that not only make no sense to us, but also to the people of Jesus' time. And one commentator proposes that this parable is a challenge whereby we can ask ourselves, 
Do we use money to love God's people as an act of worship? Or do we use money to serve our own interests? Do our riches come at the expense of others? Or do we continue to abide in a moral vision that protects our neighbors as God's children? The steward in the parable is the counter response, perhaps, to these questions. Yet we also hear that the stewarding of relationships is ultimately more important than money and riches. When I was a kid, my siblings and I played board games with our father in his highly competitive way. Like in the game of Monopoly, where I learned to not cut my brothers and sisters any slack when the only property they had left was a low rent one in the Pennsylvania Railroad. I thought that to drive them into bankruptcy was fun. Many years later, when I was playing Monopoly with a friend and her two middle school kids, and I was trying to teach them those cutthroat ways to win, one of the kids said to me, why would I want to learn how to bankrupt people and make them cry and make them not want to play with me anymore? And what I thought was the fun of the game, the adrenaline rush of winner takes all at any expense, dissolved into a big slimy mess of guilt for me. And then I wondered what it would be like to play Monopoly, the game that's built supposedly on how the acquisition of and use of property in this country works, what would it be like to play it in a different way, a cooperative way? And I considered in the light of this parable, how do we play the game of managing our material resources in ways that builds healthy relationships? and in a wider scope, builds up community. And in this season of creation care, how do we steward our material resources to restore and heal the effects of the climate crises on fragile communities and species? If you've been reading the news this week, you would have heard of the 48 Venezuelan migrants who were flown from Florida and left at the airport at Martha's Vineyard with no resources and no understanding about where they were and what would happen to them. Though the motivations of the government leaders who sent them were politically divisive and their representatives' communications to the undocumented migrants blatantly dishonest, I have to name that I am grateful and proud. They were taken in by St. Andrew's Episcopal Church in Edgartown. There, when the word came out, they were the first to respond. They became a hub for the outpouring of assistance, for translation, for legal needs, and for health and financial needs. Our sister church and the wider Martha's Vineyard community and, and then Massachusetts state government were able to assist our neighbors, terrified through this confusing and horrific experience until they were able to be voluntarily relocated to Joint Base in Cape Cod. The government leaders involved may have bought themselves political capital among their cronies, yet the opening of hearts and resources in the name of Christ is an act of building relationships of faithful stewardship. The church community and people of Martha's Vineyard with their small buildings rose in compassion, rose above the deplorable use of people as political pawns, in Jesus' name, the proclamation is made that communities can be healers, and the wounded and brokenhearted are brought into healing relationships with Christ's love. 
In this season of creation, the focus is also on communities of the earth that are impacted by climate change and crises. And right now we're hearing of the terrible devastation in Alaska of an unprecedented hurricane landing on the shores. The question of stewardship can also be asked of us as individuals and as church communities. How do we use our material resources to support the health of our planet and the health of our neighbors suffering from the effects of flooding, fire, and toxic dumping? Where can we invest in resources that heal and restore? How do we restore relationships with God's creation that have been broken by the decimation of other species on this earth? One great resource to consider is the organization Climate Stewards USA that offers concrete ways to calculate your carbon footprint in your household, this church, or commercial use with your diet and with travel. Then the cost in dollars of your calculation of your carbon output is given to you, and then that money can then be donated, that amount's given to you, not the money, the money can then be donated to a nonprofit organizations as a form of carbon offset that support projects that capture or limit carbon, like planting trees in Uganda and Kenya and Peru, supplying smokeless stoves in Nepal or fireless cookers in Uganda. Let us pray. Jesus, help us to get it. Help us to see the ways that our legacies and beliefs of family, class, culture, and lifestyle might cloud our ability to invest in healthy relationships with our neighbors in need and our planet. Help us to see the places and material resources where we need to divest from where we derive profit from the harm of the fragile earth, our home. Help us to have the courage and grace to follow the ways you lead for us into compassionate relationships with all beings, amen. Let us say together the words of the Nicene Creed on page 358 of the Book of Common Prayer. We believe in God, God the Father of all, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, of one being with the Creator. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. <clears throat> On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and the kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. But the Father and the Son, she is worshipped and glorified. She has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
the prayers of the people honoring God in creation. Blessed God, whose love calls the whole creation into covenant with you, and who puts in our hands responsibility for the care of the earth and its creatures. We pray for all to whom you have given life and being, saying, merciful God, keep your planet and people in peace. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, for Alan and Gail, our bishops, for Kate, our rector, for Michael, our seminarian, for our lay ministers serving today and all people. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for Wyman Memorial Church of St. Andrew, Marblehead, St. Michael's Church, Marblehead, St. Mary's Church, Rockport, congregations, secretaries, and administrators. We pray for those celebrating a birthday this week, especially Janine Zulo and Cosmo Zulo, and for those celebrating an anniversary. Merciful God, keep your plan and our people in peace. For the well-being of the earth, for its resources of water, air, light, and soil, that they may be tended for the good of all creatures, we pray. Merciful God, keep your plan and our people in peace. For the waters of the earth, for their careful use and conservation, that we may have the will of the ability to keep them clean and pure, we pray. Merciful God, keep your planet and people in peace. For the mineral and energy resources of the planet, that we may learn sustainable consumption and sound care of the environment from which they come, we pray. Merciful God, keep your planet and people in peace. For the animals of the earth, wild and domestic, large and very small, that they may know the harmony of relationship that sustains all life, we pray. Merciful God, keep your planet and people in peace. For the creatures of the earth who do us harm and those whose place in your creation we do not understand or welcome, that we may see them as beloved creatures of God, we pray. Merciful God, keep your planet and people in peace. For all who shape public policies affecting the planet and its creatures, especially Joe, our president, Charlie, our governor, and Paul, our mayor, that they may consider wisely the well-being of all who come after us, we pray. Merciful God, keep your planet and people in peace. For all those engaged in conservation, in agriculture and ranching, in aquaculture and fishing, in mining and industry, and in forestry and timber harvesting, that the health, fruitfulness, and beauty of the natural world may be sustained alongside human activity, we pray. For the creatures and the human beings of your world who are ill or in danger, pain, or special need, especially Evan, Bob, Jerry, Jean, Ellen, Barbara, Anne, Kate, Jane, Steve, Dan, Helen, Cindy, Mike, Casey, Frank, Janelle, Lily, Sarah, and Sherry, and others we may name. For all those suffering from the effects of climate change, presently in Alaska, Pakistan, and other areas of the world. We pray also for all who suffer from the unjust, violent, or wasteful use of the Earth's resources, or their devastation by war, that all may one day live in communities of justice and peace. We pray. Merciful God, keep your planet and people in peace. For the gifts of science and technology, and for those who practice these skills, that they may be wise, visionary, and compassionate in their work, we pray. Merciful God, keep your planet and people in peace. For the creatures and the people of the earth whose lives and deaths have contributed to the fruitful abundance of this planet. This morning, we remember the loved ones of the Tierno family in whose memory the altar flowers are given. And we pray for the repose of the soul of Priscilla Poutre. And Mary Jane, sister-in-law of Barbara. 
Merciful God, keep your planet in peace. Gracious God, grant that your people may have in them the same mind that was in Christ Jesus, and guide us into harmony of relationship through loving kindness and the wise use of all that you have given. For you are drawing all things into communion with you and with each other by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and God's creation using the prayer in our religion. Holy and merciful God, we confess that we have failed to honor you by rightly claiming our kinship with all your creatures. We have walked heavily on your earth, overused and wasted its resources, taken for granted its beauty and abundance, and treated its inhabitants unjustly, holding future generations hostage to our greed. Have mercy on us and forgive us our sin. Renew in us the resolve to keep and conserve your earth as you desire and attend with grateful and compassionate hearts. Through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace, peace, peace. Good morning. peace to everybody worshiping at home. Peace, peace, Ben. So I'd like to invite our vestry person of the day to make our announcements. Morning. I just morning. like to call your attention to some things that are, these are also in a bulletin. Um, we are collecting for the food drive, which is a local organization formed in Melrose that does wonderful work taking uh, unused food from restaurants and grocery stores and distributing it. And we are right now collecting boxes of cereal. And on October 2nd, we're going to have um, Jana Jimenez from the Food Drive um, with us in, at Trinity. Today, please uh, go outside after the service. It's a blessing of the backpacks. And there will also be ice cream, ice cream sundaes with cream, chocolate, etc. And um, Linda also has some games out there for the children and even for adults. We've got our cornhole, we've got um, ladder ball and a few other games to play. So please join us after the service. Also, um, we're starting to plan for the Festival of Trees, which as you know, is a that works in concert with uh, Home for the Holidays. And there's gonna be a planning meeting next week at 920 before the 10 o'clock service. So if you have any ideas as to what we might do, please uh, stop by at 920 next week. Oh my goodness, Porch Fest next Saturday. Um, this coming Saturday, the 24th, we are gonna have two bands for Porch Fest, one at two and one at four, right out here on the side of the church. Please join us. That's awesome, thank you, Miles. So as many of you know, next week will be my last Sunday here at Trinity. And I wanted to invite you to a farewell gathering after the service so we can uh, be together on this last day that I'll be with you um, on a Sunday. Um, I also want to mention um, that part of my leave taking is also going to be part of the service next week. So um, I'll be, there'll be a special part of the service and I would love to have you all be present and part of that. So if you're worshiping with us online, please come and be with us. 
uh, is part of that service. Um, part of the challenge and wisdom of me leaving is that I do have a mutual agreement with the vestry and the next priest, uh, people who will be serving with you, is that I have to take a one-year leave. Of you know, I cannot be in contact with parishioners um, and staff and people connected to the parish of Trinity, which is difficult, and it's also a necessary boundary so that the next person to come will be able to have and establish pastoral relationships with you. And if you have any questions about that, I refer you to our, our wardens, Kathleen and Phil. And so um, just wanted to make sure you knew that so that you could be present if possible with us next Sunday. All things come of you, O oh God. Great Thanksgiving is Eucharistic Prayer C in your bulletin. God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler, and creator of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory, glory to, to you, you forever, forever and ever. ever. At your command, all things came to be, the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By, By your, your will, will were they, they created, created and have their being. 
From the primal elements you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the stewards of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have, Have mercy, mercy, God, God for we, we are sinners in your sight. sight. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time you sent your only Son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By Christ's blood, Christ reconciled us. By Christ's wounds, we are healed. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. <clears throat> So God, we who have been redeemed by Christ and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his friends and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in memory of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood for the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we, we celebrate, celebrate Christ's Christ death, death and resurrection, resurrection as we await the day of Christ's coming. Lord God of our fathers and mothers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God of Sarah and Hagar, of Rebecca, Leah, and Rachel, God of all creation, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen, Risen Christ, Christ, be known to us in, in the breaking, breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises God through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. As the wisdom before creation teaches us, we pray, eternal spirit, earth maker, pain bearer, life giver, source of all that is and that shall be, father and mother of us all, loving God in whom is heaven, the hallowing of your name echoes through the universe. The way of your justice be followed by the peoples of the world. Your heavenly will be done by all created beings. 
Your beloved community of peace and freedom, sustain our hope and come on earth. With the bread we need for today, feed us. In the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. In times of temptation and test, strengthen us. From trials too great to endure, spare us. From the grip of all that is evil, free us. For you reign in the glory of the power that is love, now and forever. Amen. This is living bread given for all creation. All who eat this bread share in Christ's body. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Sure. Have a big goal. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation.
Let us gather and voice together for our post-communion prayer in your bulletin. Create in us a new heart and new vision, O God, that the gifts of your spirit may work in us and renew the face of the earth. May we be one with you so that our work is yours and your work is ours. Lead us to transform our lives, to reflect your glory in creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who is alive with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So I forgot an important announcement. The Queen's funeral is tomorrow in the Anglican tradition. So this is a great evangelical opportunity for those of you who want to spread the news of the beauty of our burial rites, our commendation rites, which our ancestor in the Anglican tradition will be using tomorrow for the, the burial of the Queen. So please, please pay particular attention to the beauty and power of the language which informs our liturgy. Go forth now to care for God's world. Use resources wisely, share your knowledge, sacrifice where necessary, live in harmony with all creation, go out into all the world as prophets of a new way of living and preach the good news to all. And the blessing of the Creator God, the risen Son, and the promised Holy Spirit bless you that you might be a blessing to others today and always. Amen. to the world giving gratitude and praise for all of creation. 
Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. And let's please come and join us for blessing of the backpacks and ice cream.